So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. So guys, as you all know that in this series, we try to discuss some concepts with the help of a few questions that can help you to prepare for your competitive exams, right? So are you ready for today's session? So before moving to today's sessions, question number one, I would like to ask you guys, To subscribe to our channel, just a second. So if you are a new entrant here, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking on this button. And if you want to stay in touch with us, you can click on this bell icon. It can provide you with all the notifications that come up, right? And after that, you can also join our Telegram group and on this group, you can post all your doubts and queries and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible, right? So moving ahead to question number one for today. Okay, and here is your question number one. And this question says, the dash is a weighted average rate at which one country's currency exchanges for a basket of multiple foreign currencies. And then after that, when it is adjusted against inflation, then it is known as dash right so in this question you have been asked about two terms let's see who guesses the answer correctly so moving ahead to correct option for this question and the correct option for this question is b as you can see here the correct option is b which means near and rear are the correct options right so near means Nominal, nominal, N for nominal. After that, EER stands for effective exchange rate. And I think you can guess the full form for real. That is real effective exchange rate. Right? So guys, here we are talking about two exchange rate. One has nominal, nominal in its name and the other one has real. So if you remember, we usually discuss in finance the relationship between nominal and real. How do we define it? See, nominal is something which has the component of inflation in it. And when you remove inflation from it, then you come to the real component. So basically you are removing the effect or impact of inflation from this nominal measure. So it can be an interest rate or it can be any other variable, right? When we remove inflation from it, we come to the real one, right? So this concept you can apply here. So guys, first of all, I would like to tell you one thing here. Although we are talking about exchange rates here and exchange rate is given. So basically this is an exchange rate which is usually used for calculation purposes and this exchange rate basically whenever you go to uh, go out to do a transaction let's say if you want to buy dollars or if you want to buy yen you're not going to use this exchange rate you're going to use the market rate. But now then what is the significance of this rate, this near and rear, they are basically indices in singular index and plural indices. So these are indices, the near is basically an index and rear is basically an index. So see, when we try to find out the relationship of one currency, let's say Indian rupee with a basket of different currencies, so it can be Euro, it can be pound, it can be yen or it can be any other currency of the world, right? So we are trying to find out the position of Indian rupee with in relation to a basket of currency, not a single currency, but a basket of currency. Then we find out the near, as you can see, nominal effective exchange rate. So basically, how do we do it? We try to find out that what sort of trading volume do we have with the currency? How much trade do you do in dollar 
और हाउ मच ट्रेड डू यू डू इन पाउंड हाउ मच ट्रेड डू यू डू इन येन सो बेसिकली वी आर ट्राइंग टू गिव वेट टू ईच ऑफ द करेंसी अकॉर्डिंग टू द ट्रेड वॉल्यूम दैट वी हैव विद अ पर्टिकुलर करेंसी राइट सो लेट से देर इज अ करेंसी लेट से देर इज अ करेंसी ऑफ अ कंट्री कॉल्ड मेक्सिको राइट बट इंडिया इंडिया इज नॉट डूइंग एनी ट्रेड विथ मेक्सिको सिंस इंडिया इज नॉट डूइंग एनी ट्रेड विथ मेक्सिको एनी चेंज दैट हैपन्स इन द करेंसी ऑफ मेक्सिको इज नॉट मच कंसर्न इज नॉट ऑफ अ मच कंसर्न टू अस राइट सिंस वी आर नॉट डूइंग एनी ट्रेड विथ दिस विथ दिस कंट्री राइट सो इफ यू हैव अ फ्रेंड एंड यू डू नॉट टॉक टू दैट फ्रेंड very much so if anything happens to that friend you might not be that much concerned but if you have a friend who is very close to you you exchange gifts on birthdays or you borrow and lend money to each other and if that friend gets in trouble or if something really good happens to that friend then you are of then you are having concern with that same concept you can apply here so you can see that a country's trading partners are very important to it's to the value of its currency in relation to other countries right moving ahead okay so guys i just told you that near is find found out by finding out the position of a currency with respect to different currencies right so the difference between nominal and real is of inflation so you find out near with the help of this formula you take the value of different currencies so you have to convert all the currencies the basket that you are taking so you have fixed that okay i want i want to find out the value of indian rupee with a certain basket of currencies and there are let's say five currencies in it so this is an example then they are that, that you want to find out the value of indian rupee with respect to five other currencies right so you as uh, you have five currencies in your basket now you would have to convert all the currencies in one single currency and then find out the rate of rupee with that single currency let's say you decide that you are going to convert all the currencies in dollar and after that when you do that you multiply or you give weights to each currency according to the trading volume that india has with each of the currency right and this trading volume this this can be any major so it can be number of imports number of exports or any sort of average or any kind of calculation between them right so it can be any any major that tells you that how much one country here in our example india is trading with other countries right so you convert all the currencies into one currency and multiply them with their weights and after that you find out an exchange rate of indian rupee with that common currency which in our example is dollar that exchange rate that that the resulting exchange rate is near and after that if you remove the inflation con if you remove the inflation component from it you reach to rear right see the significance of near is that it is telling you about india's competitiveness in relation to its other trading partners that how strong one country is in compare in comparison to its other trading partners right and real effective rate tells you about the inflation less part so basically in this part inflation is involved that is why it is not giving you the complete picture so any sort of overvaluation can be or any sort of uh inflation any sort of overvaluation or any hike in the price can be a result of inflation that is why we try to remove it to find out the real effective rate that whether a currency our domestic currency it has grown or its value has declined right okay moving ahead to the solution i think we have discussed almost all the points present here you can see uh forex traders refer to near as trade weighted currency because obviously it gives weights according to the trade volume and an indicator of country's international competitiveness just told you about this domestic currency so it is the exchange rate that the amount of domestic currency needed to buy for foreign currency so 
In economics, it is used for policy analysis on international trade. So it has significance in international trade and compares one currency against a basket of foreign currencies and may be adjusted to compensate for inflation for the home country relative to inflation of its trading partners. Resulting figure, real effective exchange rate to find out the complete transparent picture, right? So moving ahead to question number two. And here is your question number two for today. It seems like a simple question. What is the minimum net worth that applicants need to have to set up portfolio management services in an international services, international finance service center? So IFSC, we have discussed about this term a lot in our sessions. I hope you all remember. If you don't, then you can comment on the video below uh, for the link and we'll try to provide you with the link as soon as possible. Okay, a very simple question. It asks you that, okay, if you are a company, you want to set portfolio management services in an IFSC area, then how much net worth do you require? The minimum net worth. Moving ahead to the solution for this question and the solution is E. So E means it says that the requirement is $750,000. E is the correct answer. Now, first of all, here we have to understand. So this is the simple fact that you can read. But what we have to understand is this. What is meant by portfolio management services? So I think you, if you try to disintegrate the term into parts, you can easily get the meaning portfolio management services. So what is portfolio? Portfolio is a group of individual investments, right? So there are different investments, investment one, investment two, investment three. So basically you have bought different investments and put them into a bag and now you are trying to reap benefits out of it. So this is a portfolio that you have, that an investor has to manage. Now see, if I am an investor and I want to go out and I want that, okay, I should invest in different kinds of investment that can give me good value, but I might not be having expertise for it. So who can do the job for me? Portfolio management services provider or a portfolio manager. You can see here. So portfolio management services offered by a portfolio manager invest is an investment portfolio. So it can be in stocks, fixed income, debt, cash, structured products. So there can be a lot of products, right? Other individual securities managed by professional money that can be potentially tailored to meet specific investment objectives. So this is the main point that it can be tailored to meet specific investment objectives. So if I am going to invest and my friend is also going to invest, we might not have the same needs and we might not have similar plans to, uh, to invest our money or what we want to do with our money, with the goals of life, right? So everyone has different goals. That is why a portfolio manager, what he or she does is they try to tailor your investments in such a way that, okay, one, there is one investor, there is me, I one, investor one, and there is my friend, investor two. I might be a very risk averse investor and I really don't want to take any risk. I want safer investments and I am happy with lesser income, but I want them to be safe. I want my money to be safe and my friend can be really risk loving investor or risk seeking investor and that friend he might want to earn a lot uh, be be it risky or not risky right so there are different types of investors different levels of risk that they are willing to take that is why a portfolio manager comes into play and manages all the things all the goals of the investor with the help of his his or her expertise you can see here so CB on September 9 came out with some operating guidelines that everyone, every any entity that wants to set a PMS portfolio management service at an IFSC would have to follow certain guidelines. So we are going to learn about some guidelines. First of first, you learned that net worth should be the limit of net worth that your answer was, right? $750,000 uh, $750, minimum net worth. 
After that, portfolio manager operating in IFSC shall not accept from the client funds or securities worth less than USD seventy thousand dollars. As you can see here, the minimum that they should accept from a client is USD seventy thousand. After that, PM operating in an IFSC shall keep the funds in and in a separate account to be maintained by them in an IFSC banking unit. So a banking unit that works in an IFSC, which is permitted by RBI, they have to open an account with that banking unit and put all those money or the funds received from the client in that separate account. Right? Moving ahead to question number three for today. And here is your question number three. Okay, this is also related to portfolio management. Portfolio management may be either may be either passive or active in nature. Those who indulge in passive management may use modern portfolio theory to help optimize the mix. So you can see this question talks about port portfolio modern portfolio theory. So in relation to this theory, you have to select the correct statement from these five statements. Moving ahead to the solution for this question. And the correct option for this question is A. A means, what is the meaning of modern portfolio theory? Mod uh, this theory, it states that portfolio variance can be reduced by selecting securities with low or negative correlation such as stocks and bonds. So guys, we'll try to disintegrate this statement so that it is easier to understand. First of all, portfolio variance, what is it? So it is a measure of risk. Portfolio managers, they try to measure that how much risk is there in the investment with the help of a measure called portfolio variance. So the higher the variance, the riskier is the investment. After that, we are talking about one term called correlation. So what is the meaning of correlation? That how closely related are two investments within with each other. So let's say there is an investor and that investor has invested into an automobile company and he has invested into another company which manufactures automobile components. So what do you think? Is there any relationship between the two or not? Let's say the sales decrease for the automobile sector. What do you think is going to be the impact on automobile components? Obviously, they are also going to come down. So both of them are moving in the same direction, right? So if one goes down, the other one also goes down. That is why usually what portfolio managers they do is they try to invest in securities which have lesser correlation amongst them or a negative correlation amongst them. What is the meaning of negative correlation? That if one falls, the other one rises, right? So let's say if you are investing in a company that is manufacturing petrol vehicles or automobiles and simultaneously you are investing in a company that manufactures electronic vehicles or green vehicles or eco-friendly vehicles, then you see there is a negative correlation. If people are uh, preferring to go for the eco-friendly vehicles, then they might not invest in the, that. then they might not want to buy the petrol run vehicles, right? So there is a negative correlation. If one falls, the other one has the chances to rise. So this theory says that if you want to reduce the risk of your portfolio, then what you can do is you can try to invest in, uh, in entities or companies from different sectors or better those investments, those companies should have a low correlation between them or a negative correlation between them. So basically the lower the correlation, the better it is because it is more diversified. Your portfolio is more diversified. So you must have he heard that uh, the rule of investment that never put your all your eggs in one basket. Although there are some theories of investing that do not follow this uh, like thematic investment. We have uh, we have learned about thematic investment in one of our previous sessions. So this is one of the interpretation or you can say one strategy to invest your money. Right. So this is what MPT says that risk can be reduced by increasing diversification by investing in um, by investing in different companies based in different sectors right moving ahead
ओके हे यू कैन सी द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ मॉडर्न पोर्टफोलियो थ्योरी इट्स अ थ्योरी फॉर कंस्ट्रक्टिंग एन इन्वेस्टमेंट पोर्टफोलियो पोर्टफोलियो वेरियंस इज एसेंशियली अ मेजरमेंट ऑफ रिस्क जस्ट एज आई टोल्ड यू बेसिकली वेरियंस मीन्स दैट हाउ डाइवर्सिफाइड इज गोइंग टू बी योर रिटर्न दैट इज हाउ इफ वन इफ रिटर्न फ्रॉम वन इन्वेस्टमेंट इज वेरी इज एक्स हाउ फार इज गोइंग टू बी द रिटर्न फ्रॉम अदर इन्वेस्टमेंट हाउ फार इज इट गोइंग टू बी फ्रॉम एक्स सो सिंपली यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट इट इज अ मेजर ऑफ रिस्क राइट सो वेरियंस इज अ स्टैटिस्टिकल टर्म so all those of you who have the knowledge of statistics must be familiar with this term that it is the square of standard deviation okay let's not get into that okay mpt takes as its central premise the idea that rational investors want to maximize returns that a normal investor wants to maximize returns with minimizing risk sometimes measured using volatility just as i told you in the example investors seek the lowest level of risk and volatility at which a target return can be achieved so basically setting that how much risk can the investor take apart and then deciding that with this level of risk how far can i achieve or how much return can i get and trying to achieve the highest of it after that following mpd risk can be lowered in a port portfolio by investing in non correlated assets diversification in this sense individuals investments return is less important than its overall contribution to portfolio in terms of risk return and diversification so basically it reduces the significance or importance of one individual investment because if one individual investment falls or goes down then we have others to take care of it right moving ahead to the question number 4 okay here is your question number 4 which says RBI recently notified new guidelines for banks to strengthen compliance functions and defined the role of a chief compliance officer so the key term in the question chief compliance officer in relation to this notification RBI said that there shall not be any dual hatting select the statement which depicts the correct meaning of this statement so select the statement out of these five that tells you about the correct meaning of this last statement that there should not be any dual hatting so basically you have to guess the meaning of the term dual hatting right moving ahead to the correct option for this question and the correct option for this question is option d option d means the cco or the chief compliance officer shall not be given any responsibility which brings elements which brings elements of conflicts of which brings elements of conflicts of interest so basically they are saying rbi is saying that okay you appoint a chief compliance officer basically you can guess from its name that a chief compliance officer what he or she is supposed to do ensuring that things are going as per the rules or the company the organization is complying to all the rules right so now they are saying that there should not be any dual hatting with the cco it means that you should not involve cco or put cco in such a situation that it involves some sort of conflict of interest basically don't give a chief compliance officer any other position which would make him or her biased towards the organization and would deviate that person from his true his or her true responsibility right so i think you get the meaning now dual hatting means don't put two hats on one head right and let the cco do their job okay they allowed some roles which are allowed for the cco to take but which do not pose a risk for creation of a situation of conflict of interest so basically that situation that position that another hat should not turn the person into a biased person towards the organization right so any position which generates any kind of strong financial interest from the company can also be considered one of the position which should not be allowed for cco right so some other guidelines here you can see banks must appoint a cco for an effective compliance culture independent uh, compliance functions corporate compliance functions and strong compliance risk management program that what are the factors that might not allow a company to comply with the rules so all those risks must be taken into account 
minimum fixed tenure of not less than three years. Here you can see. After that, the CCO shall be senior executive of the bank, preferably in the rank of a general manager, general manager or an equivalent position, not below two levels from the CEO. And CCO could also be recruited for from market. So not much restrictions regarding the recruitment of CCO shall have an overall experience of at least 15 years. So must be an experienced person in the field of finance. You can see here out of which minimum five years shall be in the field of should be in the field of audit, finance, compliance, legal risk management functions. Right. After that CCO shall have a direct reporting lines to the MD and CEO. And so if there is any problem, the CCO can directly approach the highest authorities in the companies, right? So basically they should have lines of communication with the highest authorities. After that compliance function shall be subject to an internal audit. Internal auditing should also be done to check the compliance functions, right? Okay, guys, moving ahead to the last question for today's session. Okay, seems like a simple question. Who will be head? Who will be the head of committee set up by finance ministry to study the impact of waiving loan interest? So finance ministry, they have set up a panel or a committee which would study the impacts of waiving loan interest. So if you remember, we have done an elaborate discussion that whether interest should be applied on this, this, uh, this moratorium availed repayments or not. So all those borrowers who, who have availed the benefit of moratorium and not paid. So shall should there be any interest on that uh, on that delay of payments also, right? So this is going to be studied by this uh, by this panel of finance ministry. Let's see the answer and the correct option for this question is A. So very simple question. The correct answer is Rajiv Meherishi who is going to be the head. Okay. Here you can see set up an expert panel to assess the impacts and it is going to be headed by so he is a former comptroller and auditor general Rajiv Maharishi also so this panel this committee also includes former monetary policy committee member Ravindra H. Dholakia so he is a very popular name very commonly heard in newspapers and former managing director of SBI and IDBI B. Sriram Will submits its reports on within a week right and after that terms of reference include measuring the impact on national economy that whether there should be interest or not so guys if you remember uh, we discussed that rbi didn't want to so rbi for the sake of banking uh, st uh, structure for the sake of protecting banks from this financial loss they, they said that okay interest should be charged and borrowers should pay because they are not paying they are having a delay in payments but supreme court they said that that uh, this this is this is this is not right since people are in such huge distress the borrowers beat corporate or retail they are in huge financial distress we cannot force them to pay so this is not right morally and this is this is like uh, this is like snatching away their uh, money or food from money from their pockets and food from their plates right so they so basically the this this is what this committee is going to be study that what should be done in this scenario in this conflict right financial stability of waiving of interest that whether banks would be financially stable if the interest is not charged and waiving of interest on interest on the covid 19 related moratorium suggest suggestions to mitigate financial constraints that what other steps can be taken and after that court also extended an interim uh, this moratorium to 28th september and told banks not to classify the assets as npa right so we have discussed this point in earlier sessions so guys these were the five questions for today i hope you learned something new from this video and if you did then don't forget to give us a thumbs up be back tomorrow with some new set of information till then take care take care of your studies and take care of yourself to keep your uh, keep your mind uh, balanced and don't put too much uh, stress on your mind because i think in this times it is very important to take care of your mental health right so i'll see you tomorrow until then thank you for being here goodbye